Hello and welcome to my channel. My name's Carol Manning and in this video we're going to be painting this rather cute puffin. The background blue I have changed from the background in the reference photo because I wanted something brighter behind the puffin originally in the reference photo. It's sort of more rocks and greenery and I felt the puffin would be a bit lost in that but I have done similar with the rocks. So I'll be showing you how I do the background wash and the rocks and then moving on to actually painting the puffin itself. Um, during this painting I'll be using Windsor & Newton professional paints and I will leave a list of in the description of the materials I've used in this painting if it's of interest to you. Putting a wash behind the puffin of a fairly light blue. It's a mixture of cerulean blue and a touch of French ultramarine and it's fairly diluted. So I'm going across the whole of the background with a large flat brush being careful that when I'm close to the puffin body I don't use leave a thicker line of blue which is a bit of the danger is that you end up with a a bit thicker closer to the puffin if you're not careful. Just mix a bit more up. I will say keeping it fairly diluted. Just going over that slightly. I'm not too worried about if I'm going over the back wings of the puffin because they're going to be really dark anyway. So any blue I get on that's not going to show, but I will be more careful on the side where the puffin is white. Of course you could put um, down some masking fluid if you wanted to. I haven't bothered on this. I will be using some masking fluid on the puffin itself as I go through the picture which you'll see I don't actually put that on during the picture but I will be putting some on and you'll see when I go over it that it leaves the mark. Obviously this is gonna dry a little bit lighter than it looks while I'm putting the wash on. So I've come, zoomed in a little bit closer for the rocks, well, so you can see me doing those. As you can see the reference photos appeared now in the corner and you can see that there was a rocky cliff face behind the puffin um, and I felt that was just a bit darker than I wanted to do so I decided I'd just do a sky background behind it. But I am doing sort of similar with the rocks so I'm not putting the um, greenery on it, some of the dried seaweed the way I'm putting some of the white which I guess is probably bird poo dried on. I'm using for this Horodam Schmincke super granulating paints and I'm using two colours, I'm using Shire Grey which is a slightly lighter one and Glacier Black and I'm mixing in some burnt umber into it to get the browning effect. The burnt umber's just a Winsor & Newton one because it's painted in with the Horam Schmincke paints. It is granulating as well. So I'm trying to create some lighter and darker areas. I'm dropping some salt onto it, sea salt on while it's wet because I want to create a grainy effect and see although the granulating paints do a good job on that on its own 
the sea salt will create even more of a granulated look to the rocks. So I'm using the Glacier Black at the moment and just filling in the gaps. Paints, the rest of the paint's just dried enough now that I can work on it without it blending in. Again, I'm mixing the odd touch of browning with it as well. Again, I'm dropping some sea salt on. Now, I left that overnight to dry and knocked the, scraped off the sea salt, which is why you also get some white patches on it, which is fine, because I'm going to add to those later on. I would say if you put sea salt on, give it a good few hours to dry, because I find otherwise it looks dry on the top, but when you lift it, it really isn't. Now I'm using a mixture of rose, permanent rose and just some black mixed in it to create a sort of really dark purpley pink. How much you can tell from the Reference photo, I'm not sure. I've all sorry, I, my mind jumps like crazy. I've also, in the meantime, put on some masking tape, masking fluid in places, so you'll see that the paint's not covering certain areas, and that's because it's got masking fluid on. Yeah, go back to what I was saying. It's got a sort of mixture of a purpley pink colour because the Undercoat's got a mixture of these reddy tones and bluey tones. So my undercoat, I'm very much using that, and I've tried to trying to create a varied background wash. I'm using a fairly large brush at this stage, it's, I think it's a number 10 round brush, number 10 or 11 round brush. I'm just working on the darker areas initially. If you want the reference photo, as I said earlier, I think it can be found in the descri description. There's a link to Unsplash, where the photo, photo link is. And if you want the outline, you can either go to the end of the video and screenshot, or alternatively, I do put the PDFs of any lined drawings I do to go with the pictures on my Facebook group, which is again in the description. The link is in the description.
So the bottom half is sort of a mixture. There's, as you can see, I put on a quite bluey area there, which is slightly cooler, and the bottom half's got a bit of brown in it, as well as the ready colour. So I'm sort of mixing them together. Trying to blend it so there's no sharp edges to any of it. Obviously I will, this is just an under layer and I will be working over the top of it all. Just carefully going around the tail feathers. currently live in Pembrokeshire and I keep meaning to, perhaps this summer, I've only lived here a couple of years, but there is one of the islands the boats go out to where all the puffins um, lay their eggs and things in the summer and I would like to get out there at some point or other and try and get some photographs done. At the moment I'm using other people's reference photos, but I would like to get some of my own. Excuse any tapping in the background, dogs wandering around. bit there I've just put in um, there's a very sort of distinct line where the one of the wings feathers goes over the top and so there's a really dark shadow in the middle of the wing there so I'm putting some fairly light light wash of grey on the face following the direction that the feathers go in. For that case, for all of the wash, I was making sure I followed the direction the feathers went in. So I'm just going over where the whites are, just putting in some of the shadows. So using a bit of Windsor Blue there. It's really brilliant blue actually. I'm using some Windsor orange and I'm just mixing that with a bit of grey just to create that reflection that's on it's underbelly and under the tail feathers. So I'm just putting a bit of clean water over the whole of the chest and just blending that all together a little bit because I don't want any harsh lines at this stage showing. Because the I say I've got the camera really high for this because I'm using an A3 shape uh, sheet. You can see all my mess on the side. So as you can see, I've got three pots of water 
one that's very dirty and the other two one on the right hand side a little bit dirtier and a clean one on that side and I'm sort of going between those pots and a couple of palettes my Windsor & Newton palette there I've got a old kitchen worktop glass worktop there that I put everything on so if it spills or gets mucky um, it just protects the surface I'm using a bit and yeah and various brushes that are dumped so yeah you're seeing it in all it's normally mess mess that I normally keep out of the filming So I'm the yellow there I've just put on the feet is a wash of Windsor yellow, Windsor orange, sorry. And I'm just putting that on the beak as well as an undercoat and the little bit beside the beak, which is I think part of his mouth parts. I saw one when they've got their mouth open, that little orange blob bit opens as well. So I think it's sort of like a crease in the corner of their mouth. So I'm zooming in a little bit and so you, you can see what I'm doing here. I'm just putting on the first layer of feathers onto the neck. Now they're quite um, lots of little lines going across. They're very short feathers at this stage and I'm using, I think it's called a grass brush. It's got lots of little strands of fur. Um, hairs uh, in a row but slightly different levels um, and it's quite effective for doing these sort of little regimented lines We'll put a list of um, materials I use in the reference photo. In the reference photo, sorry, in the description. Just using a bit of black to darken down some of the areas, and again, I'm just doing that stippling with the brush, getting those small lines going across. bought this a while back and I haven't actually used it before but having used it for this I will probably be using it a lot more so what I'm doing here is I'm using the round brush I think I'm using a size 6 or 7 here and I'm using it fairly flat I haven't got it upright I'm laying it flat and I'm using the shape of the end of the brush to create a feather shape again I'm using black with some red mixed in with it okay following the the shapes at the bottom there and again putting those feather shapes using that brush laid flat it looks more upright when I'm watching it but I sure you have got it on its side Um, indigo so again I'm just following the direction of the feathers and adding some of that blue into those 
tail feathers at the bottom there. If you're having a go at this yourself, just be aware this is speeded up quite significantly. I think I'm about two and a half times on this one because otherwise it would be far too long as it is. It's a bit longer than my normal videos, almost an hour long. So I'm already starting by using the different colours to create um, lighter and darker values and cooler and obviously blue, the blue is a cooler colour than the pink grey. using that number six or seven brush. Putting the dark feathers in around the legs, just over the top of the legs. Darkening down those bits around the face. Again, just putting some of the feathery effects on the head. having excess br paint off my brush when I need to on the kitchen roll that's there. As you can see how, by how dirty it is, I've used that quite a lot. And I'm just lifting some of the paint again because I wanted that area to be lighter than it ended up. I'm just putting a f bit of a brown wash over that. And again, just lifting a little bit on the back there as well. I'm going over with another layer of feather. Now there's a bit of a jump there. The eye has suddenly appeared. My camera memory had cut out at that point and I hadn't realized. So all I have done on that is nothing major. I've put some, a burnt umber undercoat and just lamp black for the pupil. I've done nothing more than that on there. Now I'm using a mix of Windsor Orange and Cadmium Free Red just to put that 
next coat on the beak. say so there's some red there's a the eyelid or eye surround is red as well a ready orange so going down to the feet again I'm using Windsor orange and cadmium free red and a mixture of the two for the, for the feet Beats have got lots of little lines across them and sort of it's like dot markings there are some areas that more like in little lines and dots that I masked off as well which I will lift at, towards the end that I wanted to keep lighter So it's just a case of working around, putting all the little lines in, pushing the darker values in, sh shading, and creating the shape. As you can see from the rocks underneath the feet, the Horodam Schmincke and the salt combined make quite a nice rocky texture. The paint lifted completely in places, which is why you've got the white dots. This is where the salt lifted it off when I scraped it off. And I will be adding to that because if you look at the rocks, there are sort of white sections of bird poo, I assume. <laughs> Dried bird poo. So I sort of will create a little bit more of that effect. I haven't put the dried seaweed on though. Just added a bit of black into that just to create a you know, make it a bit more sort of grey darker It's just a case of looking at the reference photo to see where the lines are and the creases are and the darker and lighter bits. I'm just working around them. So just putting the claws in using some lamp black, some of it diluted to grey and some of it a bit darker so it stands out against the rock. There's an odd little claw that's sticking up at the back there. Just lifting the odd mark 
that's appeared on the page. So I've just zoomed in on the head and I'm just putting in some of the cadmium free red to create a little bit of a redder colour but also lifting a little bit off the top of the eye to create a highlight. And on the eyelids. And that little black marking that's above the eyelid. And I'm just putting some more diluted grey paint to add a few extra marks into that lighter part of the highlight of the neck. Still need some highlights there and likewise putting some darker bits over the top. Just using a miniature brush now. It's a 10 stroke zero I think. I'm going back to that number six seven brush and just laying down some more of those feather shapes using some indigo paint and just holding the brush sideways to get that brush imprint for the feather imprint. and using the miniature brush to create some feather lines and just working my way around it doing the two using grey or the indigo blue so I'm just starting to put some of the grey lines into the body area, chest area. I'm using either, oh, I'm zooming into the head now. Again I've got, just using a grey there or a diluted indigo. Following the direction of the feathers, um, creating that slightly rounded effect. So just putting some darker lines around the eye, both the iris and the surround, and some more feather lines in. I've lifted the masking glued off now, so I'm adding in some markings where the masking fluid was covering. Putting a bit of an edge into the 
beak to make it stand out a bit more. Darkening the bottom of the eye to make it more rounded. And I decided at this stage I wasn't totally happy with the shape of the eye, so I just adjusted that and left that to dry. And I'm going to now just put in a bit of a wash over that white, because although I wanted it lighter and I wanted it to stand out, I didn't want it to stand out that much. So just knocking it back a bit so it's more of a grey than a... As you can see I'm dipping in a few different colours there. I think I've got the indigo, the grey, lamp black and there's a bit of brown I think I was dipping into there as well. So just dip my brush between them. As you can see it still stands out as lighter but not but more natural than it was before. So I'm back to that miniature brush and starting to put add some of the smaller details. There's quite a lot of um, dark lines that come down from the wing feathers. I'm just adding in odd feathers sticking out I suppose. Okay just taking the black into where that masking fluid was. And starting to put some of the chest lines in. I'm going to do jump about a bit because my brain's a bit scattered like that. And I suddenly think, oh, I'll go to that bit and do that. And I've zoomed back into the face area and I'm just touching up that eye again. Putting a bit more dark where the pupil was and redoing the left hand side of the outline. Put a little bit grey into the whites of the eye. and touching up the area with a bit of candy red. I'm 
so we'll be dotting around a bit all over the place with the body. I've just put put in some of the highlights that I did want in with um, a 0.5 jelly pen. Just bringing some lines out from that area that was masked off into the grey and black. I do keep going back, go, going back to the winds, adding little bits back in and out again. Trying to get the light and dark values, so I'm happy with them.
So with the chest area, I'm using a diluted indigo and also grey and a bit of the jelly pin to break it up and then I'll be probably for the rest of the video at this point flitting between faffing around with the wings a bit more until I'm happy with them which will be a case of lifting a bit adding a bit of dark putting a bit of feather details in and the same with the chest area I'll be putting a few more feather lines in I'm breaking up some of the greys I put in earlier with the um, jelly pen there and it's just a case of me at this stage going around fiddling around with it basically you could probably stop a little bit earlier than I've gone on if you're painting this yourself I do faff and put in a lot of details and I sometimes perhaps I overwork it and keep going longer than I need to but um, I tend to keep going with painting until I'm really happy with it so it's just a case of working my way around if you're interested at all in what else I do as an artist I am currently in the process of doing a newsletter I'm going to try and get it out by the end of February um, in that I do sort of will do a bit of bloggy type writing about what I'm up to as an artist um, I belong to well recently belonged to Pembrokeshire Craft Makers Group and they'll be starting to exhibit from around Pembrokeshire from the end of March so I'll be joining them in that and so I'll be providing a little bit more details of things I'm doing as an artist as well as shop updates and occasional discount codes for my shop so if you're interested at all um, in that then you can find the subscription to my newsletter on my website which is in the link below in the description so just darkening down the edge of the chest area there with some grey to make it stand out from the sky background otherwise it would have blended a bit too much and I'll say it's just a case of working my way around it. I'm using obviously a miniature brush for all of the chest markings. So carrying on, really touching things up and working on the bits around the chest. And I'll say I'm back to the, the wing. I say there's a lot of faffing around from this point onwards, um, touching up. me coming back and looking at the reference photo thinking no I haven't quite got that bit right or that bit should be especially the lighter and darker values I'm using a bit of um, purple there which um, winds of violet
then I realised at this point, okay, this is when I was looking back, back at it, I'd actually loaded some of the um, video clips up to the editing program and I was actually looking at that thing, how did I miss that big dark shadow on the chest? So I went back to it and added that in. Sometimes because I've got the tablet that I work from under the lights that I use for filming, it distorts some of the shadows and things and I don't always see them. So I say I was looking at the video clips as I was putting it on for editing and thinking that's that's not quite right there. if you do look at it in comparison, the reference in comparison to mine, there is a darker grey on the right hand side of the chest. That's because I've changed the background to a lighter blue in the photograph because it's a dark background. The chest stands out as quite a white outline, light outline, because obviously I'm putting it on a different lighter background. I needed to make sure I changed that. So I've just switched to a smaller brush here and I'm just starting going around on some of the wing feathers and just putting in some fine lines just to give it a little bit of detail. So I'm almost finished, just doing a few last minute touches around the end and I'll say it really is just using some of the last tiny touches. I'll say if you're doing this yourself you probably don't need to go to fuss perhaps quite as much as I have over it. But hopefully you enjoyed watching. Um, if you have, if you could please press the like, it would be very much appreciated. And perhaps consider subscribing if you want to see future pictures that I'm, I'll be painting on here. And if you choose to subscribe, perhaps if you could press the notification button as well. So you'll be aware when new things that I put up are available. I'll say all of that 
really helps me so anything like that is really appreciated the line drawings just coming up as I said the link for the reference photos in the description so thank you very much for watching and hopefully I'll see you here again <laughs>